Hello folks, welcome back to another video in this series of programming in Java using BlueJ. So, in the previous video I just got started with arrays. Why do we need arrays and what are arrays and how do we actually do simple operations on an array like storing 10 numbers into an array and just printing them. In this video onwards, I'm actually going to speak about the, some of the applications of arrays. So, I'm, I'm trying to actually keep this video not so big. Uh, I'm focusing mainly on bubble sorting. So how do we actually store a few numbers in the array, basically integers, and then sort them in ascending or descending order using a technique known as bubble sort. I hope that you have actually understood pretty much how numbers are stored in an array. So when I say int a of open bracket and say space followed by close bracket square brackets is equal to open the flower brackets or the curly brackets followed by the digit separated by commas. The same numbers are actually going to get stored in an array in the same order. Array of 0 is going to contain 1. Array of 1 is going to contain 8, 9, 0, minus 1, 15 and 5. And definitely this array is not actually sorted. <coughs> so we are actually going to use a technique called as bubble sort to sort the elements in this array. So how do we do it? What I do is, what is the maximum number of elements in my array? It's going to be 6. So, max is, I'm actually uh, writing down a variable by the name here. Say, max position is going to be equal to 6. The max position is going to be equal to 6. So, what I have to do is, I have my pointer. You see this pointer, which is pointing here, this arrow, blue arrow. Yeah, it's pointing to the first element in the array. Now, I need to traverse the array, meaning I have to just check the elements of the array one by one. Now, what do I check here? All I do is check if the second element of the array, or say the first element of the array is greater than the second element of the array. I just check if one is greater than eight, or I just check in a much more simpler way, if a of i, or it's simply if a of zero, is it greater than, is it greater than a of 1? This is just going to check if 1 is greater than 8. Definitely, 1 is not greater than 8. I don't do anything. I just move on to the next location. Alright? I just check again if a of 1 is greater than a of 2. Is a of 1 is greater than a of 2. That is, is 8 greater than 9? No. 8 is not greater than 9. Is 8 greater than 9? No. I don't do anything. I just push this arrow to the next position. Now, I again check, is 9 greater than 3? So, in terms of arrays, it's going to look like if a of 2 is greater than a of 3. Is 9 greater than 0? Is 9 greater than 0? Certainly yes. Now what I do is, before actually pushing my arrow to the next location in the array, I just decide to swap the elements. I just like, you know, bring 0 here and bring 9 here. You know what I mean? You know, if this condition, then I swap a of 2 and I swap a of 3. If this condition succeeds, so basically it's now going to look like, you know, it's now going to look programmatically, it's looking like if a of i greater than, you know, a of i plus 1, if a of i is greater than a of i plus 1, then I'm going to swap a of i followed by a of i plus one. We are actually going to see how the code is going to develop in pieces. We're not going to write the code in one shot. We're going to see how the program is going to develop in pieces. So that's it. If a of two is greater than a of three, we just check if nine is greater than zero and then after swapping, I just push it. And now I have to see if nine is greater than minus one or simply say is if, if, you know, I just get rid of the swap. If a of three is greater than a of 4. 
which is same as if a of i is greater than a of i plus 1. Certainly, a of 3 is greater than a of 4, that is, 9 is greater than minus 1. So what do I do? I have to swap a of i and a of i plus 1. So I just have to swap it here. And I have to actually increment this pointer. Now, what does this pointer increment correspond to? I'll show you. Now, I have to check if a of 4 is greater than a of 5. Is a of 4 greater than a of 5? Is this element, is 9 greater than 15? No, do nothing. Just increment the pointer. Just increment the pointer. Now, pay close attention. And once again, is 15 greater than 5? That is, is a of 5 greater than a of 6? That is, we're just checking if 15 is greater than 5. Certainly, yes. So I swap 15 and 5. You know what I mean? I swap 15 and 5. And I actually push the pointer to the last location. You'll be thinking, can I actually do a checking of if a of 6 is greater than a of 7? You can't do that because there are no 7 elements in the array. The max position is 6. I'm not supposed to go outside this array because there's no element over there. So I stop here. I cannot do this operation. The last operation I do is, is a of 5 greater than a of 6. I stop here. Now what has happened? In the, big, in the end of this operation, you see the largest element in the array has come to the end of the array. You say it's like bubbled out. What happens to the bubble when it's inside the water? The bubble actually comes on top. That's the reason why this sorting actually got bubble sort. The largest element of the array is bubbled out. It comes on top or it comes to the end of the array. Now, it's a simple mechanical task of just repeating the operation, but I don't have to do it until the max position is equal to 6. Previously, the max position was 6. Since we already got the largest element stored in the last position of the array, we have to repeat the same operation until max position is equal to 5. We have to repeat the same operation for all these elements except for 15. Meaning, we just have to stop this operation once we hit here. So let me actually, uh, you know, copy, you know, like, Paste the same thing. Wait a minute. Copy this and say paste. I'll actually make a small pointer and make it, you know, I'll try to actually make it a different color. Yeah. And try to invert it and say, I have to repeat the next operation only until 5. I'm not supposed to go to 6. My max position is actually 5. I'm not supposed to repeat it until 6. So let me actually highlight this to black so it's visible. Okay, I have to repeat the same operation. I have to repeat the same operation, you know, starting from 0, but this time only until 5. So I guess this must be clear to you. I'll just erase this line. So first time we did the operation. How many times? You know, for int i equals to 0, i less than or equal to, you know, 6, 0 to 6. And then we did i plus plus. We actually put the entire thing inside a for loop. Yes. This pretty much took care, this pretty much took care of, you know, finding out the largest element at the end of the array. Now we have to repeat the same operation once again. We have to repeat the same operation, forget about the loop now, we have to repeat the same operation once again, starting from i. We check if 1 is greater than 8, no, so we just increment here. We just check if 8 is greater than 0, certainly yes. So swap it 
and put this over here if 8 is good and increment this pointer is 8 greater than minus 1? certainly yes so we remove 8 we put minus 1 over here and we increment the pointer over here and then we just check if 8 is greater than minus 9 no I mean if 8 is greater than 9 no just increment the pointer is 9 greater than 5 certainly yes so I swap 9 and 5 and I actually put this 9 over here and then increment the pointer now I stop because my pointer has now reached the max position which is equal to 5 I'm not supposed to actually cross beyond where this red arrow actually is pointing I have to stop here now if you see at the end of the second pass I see the second largest number in the original array being moved to the last but one position so I have to repeat the same operation now on until this element so my max position is now equal to 4 so I have to repeat the same operation until 4 now does it make sense so I have to keep repeating this operation I have to keep repeating this operation first time it was until 6 my max position was 6 second time my max position is going to be 5 third time my max position is going to be 4 observe here observe here first time my max position was 6 second time my max position was 5 third time my max position was 4 so I have to keep repeating this operation in the decreasing order of max position so can I actually call it max position can I call this variable as max position each time after finishing this loop I just have to give max position minus minus makes sense how many times do you think I have to repeat this operation as many number of elements in the array I have to repeat this operation as many number of times there are number of elements in the array if there are seven elements in the array I have to repeat the entire operation seven times so I now add a bigger for loop which takes care of in j is equal to zero i less than number of elements or size of array size of array size of array and I give j plus plus hope this makes sense of how we actually develop the code piece by piece we didn't write the code from top to bottom writing the outer loop first and then writing the inner loop first no we just wrote the code starting from the inner loop what are we doing as a basic operation and how many times is that basic operation repeated this this is actually responsible this is actually responsible you know for swapping the elements but how many times are we doing the operation of swapping the elements is like as many times as there are number of the elements in the array if there are seven elements in the array I have to do it seven times so I have to initialize int size of array to seven so I have to repeat this operation seven times so and I have to declare another variable called int max position is going to be equal to you know six max position is equal to six or you can simply say cut this put it below this or you can say the six is going to be nothing but size of array minus one which is nothing but seven minus one as simple as that okay I have to repeat this operation from zero until size of array whereas I have to repeat this operation starting from zero to max position and each time after I complete this operation I just have to you know decrement the max position you know what happened here alright I guess this part must be clear to you so let me show you how to actually put this as a working code that's the most important thing let me show you how to actually put this in a working code so let me keep it down here and let me actually finish it off now max position again I reset this to this here now is 1 greater than 0 yes certainly I put this down I put this here I put 1 over here I increment the pointer is 1 greater than minus 1 certainly yes so I bring minus 1 over here 
and I put one over here. I bring this here. Now is one greater than eight? No, I just increment this here. Now you might be asking, where am I doing the incrementing of the pointer? You see what's happening here in the inner loop i plus plus. Only if this condition is satisfied, is a of i greater than a of i plus one. Only then we swap. Otherwise, we just continue with the loop. What's happening? That is i is incremented. This i plus plus is corresponding to the movement of this blue color pointer <coughs> to the subsequent location. Is eight greater than five? Certainly yes. So we swap eight and five. So five comes in here, and eight goes up here. And this pointer, this blue pointer, <coughs> is now actually hit the max position. And I'm not actually supposed to continue the operation beyond the max position. The max position is four. That's where exactly this red color arrow or this, you know, like this brown color arrow actually is pointing. So I do not actually wish to move my operation beyond this red arrow. So what I do in the next operation, I make max position is equal to three. I reset back to the zero position and max position comes back to here. The red arrow actually comes to this point. And that's what happens each time when you do max position minus minus after completion of the inner loop. And then, then we again start the inner loop from zero. That's when this blue pointer actually is moved to the zeroth location. Now, we do the same operation. Is zero greater than minus one? Certainly yes. So we swap, we swap these locations. Zero comes in here. One goes in here. We've already moved. I then is zero greater than one? Certainly not. Just increment i. Is one greater than five? Certainly not. And just increment five. I cannot do any kind of checking operation beyond this because already this portion or this i has reached the max position, the red arrow. I have to again decrement red arrow position to my two. It comes over here and I reset back my i to minus one and I check is is minus one greater than zero? Certainly not. So I just increment my position here, increment my variable i is zero greater than one? Certainly not. I again move my pointer over here and I cannot move it beyond this because I have actually reached my max position which is pointed at 2. So now what do I do? I I reset my i to 0 all right and I actually decrement my max position to 1 and I move my red arrow to this point. Fine. Now again I check if minus 1 is greater than 0. No. Just increment this. No. Now I cannot compare if 0 is greater than 1 because I have already reached to where my red arrow actually is pointing. So I cannot do the operation. I have to decrement my max position to 0. Once I decrement my max position to 0, what I do is like, you know, I come here. Once my i and my max position matches, I don't do any operation. So I pretty much stop everything. So how many times did I do the comparison operation? I did it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. That is what is this loop controlling. I repeated the operation of comparing and swapping seven times. This is a loop which is resp responsible for comparing and swapping. And this loop, the outer loop, is responsible for how many times I have to do the comparison and swapping. I have to do it seven times. Starting from 0 to 7. That is 7 times. That is 0 to 6 basically. So let's actually see this as a working code. Now what happened? At the end of it, you see a sorted array. Minus 1, 0, plus 1, 5, 8, 9 and 15. This is all about bubble sort. It's as simple as that. See this here. See the code? See the code over here? Well, let's open the BlueJ editor and write the working program for this. So let me remove this and let me actually create a new class, say bubble sort. All right. Let me open the editor. 
let me clear everything class bubble sort you know then I just I just write a main function public static void main we create an integer array int a of is equal to let's copy the same numbers as we did in the example it's going to be, it's going to be uh, the original array is 1890-1 mm, let me actually keep it here yeah so I can copy that from there it's going to be 1 8 9 0 minus 1 15 and 5 so we have created and initialized the array now let's copy the code to make sure that I'm not doing anything anything more than copying the code int array size is equal to 7 right and then int max position is equal to 6 which is nothing but array size minus 1 all right so I need a for loop for int j is equal to 0 and j less than array size and j plus plus all right I need another for loop let me actually close the bracket I'm just copying the code so if you understood this there is no need for me to actually explain what's what I'm doing in the editor over here so for int i is equal to 0 and you know like I like to keep the variable declarations outside the place where I'm using it here so I'll just declare i and j over here so I can just like I don't have to do the redeclaration over here and I <coughs> less than or equal to max position and then I write it as I plus plus if okay now I have to start and end I have to start and end this block out here so if a if a of i you know it's greater than a of i plus 1 then I just have to swap it now we have to write the code for swapping so the code for swapping is like I need a temporary variable I hope and I assume that you know how to actually swap two variables using a third variable called temp so I'm not going to explain the details of how to actually swap two variables um, okay let me actually explain that for those of you who are not aware of swapping suppose say I have two variables which is stored in a of i is equal to 5 and say then I have another variable say if I have a of i is equal to 5 and I have another variable called a of uh, you know like a of a of 1 is equal to 5 and I have a of 2 is equal to say 7 how do I actually swap 5 and 7 meaning whatever actually is in a of 1 must now go to a of 2 and whatever is going to be in a of 7 is now actually supposed to come back to a of 1 so what do I do I create a temporary variable 10 is equal to a of 1 All right so now temp is equal to 5 I simply have to copy I simply have to copy a of 1 is equal to a of 2 this will result in a of 1 being equal to 7 okay now a of 1 is now equal to 7 now I have to write a of 2 is going to be equal to temp which will result in a of 2 being equal to Five, because what was stored in temp, temp was stored in 5. So what was initially in a of 1, 5 and a of 2, 7. And what happened after the swap operation? a of 1 actually became 7 
and then a of 2 actually became 5. We need a third variable without which we cannot swap because if you don't have a third variable, if you don't save the value of 5 which was previously in a of 1, array location 1, in a local variable called temp, which is a temporary variable, what would happen is once you copy, once you do this operation, a of 1 is equal to a of 2, a of 1 is going to become 7 and a of 2 is going to become 7. Now where do we get 5 from? To copy it to a of 2, that's where we use this third variable called as temp. So this is actually a very brief explanation about how do we do swapping. So I have declared a third variable called temp over here. So I do the same thing over here. Temp is equal to a of i followed by a of i is equal to a of i plus 1 followed by a of i plus 1 is now equal to temp. That's it. That's it. We are done with bubble sort. This is basically the swapping operation. This is the inner loop which does the comparison and swap. And this is the outer loop which controls the execution of the inner loop as many number of elements are there in the array. Now how do we check whether the elements are sorted or not? So system.out.println the sorted array is sorted array elements are so and so I need another another for loop array size and then I say I plus plus so system dot I have to just print a of i as simple as that followed by space compile this file saved no syntax errors close it let me actually minimize it and let me call the main function what happened here aha uh -huh. array out of bound exception at line number 15 okay okay so if a of i greater than a of i plus 1. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why are we getting this? Now let me look into it. Alright. So we got this error array index out of bound exception is because we just have to remove this equal to sign. It's trying to access outside the array. When we remove the equal to sign, well, let's compile it, close it, clear it, close it. It was a runtime error. Call the main function. See, the sorted array elements are minus 1, 0, 1, 5, 8, 9, and 15. What was our original array? Our original array was this, what I'm highlighting in blue. This was our original array. 1, 8, 9, 0, minus 1, 15, and 5. Now, our sorted array is going to be minus 1, 0, 1, 5, 8, 9, and 15. See here? Can you see the output? The original array was 1, 8, 9, 0, minus 1, 15, 5, and the sorted array is going to be this. Let me actually open the code and show it to you. See, this was our original array, and after sorting, oops. What happened? Where is the editor? Not this. I don't need this. Where was that? I don't need this either. Here it is. Yes. Here exactly it is. See? This was our original array which we initialized. 1, 8, 9, 0, minus 1, 15 and 5 and we got it. Let's actually try to give some of the random numbers over here. Let's clear this output and let's close this. Let's give some other number. Let's give say minus 17 0, 56, the largest number is 456, followed by 67, 45, 1, or, I mean 6. We just have to make sure there are not more than 7 elements because we have to modify array size everywhere. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Compile it. No syntax errors. Close it. Call the main function. See? 
let me actually show the original input data and let's compare it with the and let's compare it with the output see the original input actually is minus 17 0 67 456 once again 67 45 and 6 and see how it's sorted minus 17 being the lowest number it's in the first place 0 being the second largest number I mean 0 being the second smallest number it's in this place and then followed by 6 45 67 67 456 so this is what bubble sort is all about and sorting it in ascending order now the modification what you have to make for sorting it in descending order is very very simple all you have to do is you know change this greater than sign to lesser than sign and then it's actually going to sort it in descending order previously it has sorted it in the increasing order of numbers now it will actually sort it in decreasing order of numbers compile it close it oops call the main see it's now actually sorted the numbers in decreasing order the largest number first the second largest number next followed by the least number in the end that's all if you actually understand how sorting is happening in ascending order changing it to descending order is just modification of this greater than sign to lesser than if it is greater than this code actually is going to work for sorting it in the ascending order that is you're sorting the number in the increasing order if you actually change the sign to lesser than then you're actually going to sort it in descending order or decreasing order which I just showed it to you so let's actually be sorting in ascending order for time being compile it close it now call the main see it's again sorted in the ascending order boom that's it bubble sort is very simple once you understand this part what I explained in the beginning of the video so rewind back to the beginning of the video and try to watch it as many times as possible until you understand how did we develop this piece of code so once you know how this piece of code works in conjunction with what I explained over here this is just going to be writing this program is just going to be a piece of cake Hope it is actually useful for you. And that's it for this video. Only bubble saw, ascending and descending. So see you in the next video where I'm going to explain about like selection sorting technique. Goodbye for now.